Hello, my name is Stefan Möll and I'm here to talk to you about using FPGAs in HPC with a Mitrion virtual processor. I'm co-founder of Mitrionics and the language designer behind Mitrion Z. History has seen a lot of computer accelerators. However, modern hardware accelerators have one important difference from the traditional accelerators of the past. Modern hardware accelerators are COTS or commercial off the shelf. This means that these devices have a large mass market that use these devices for other purposes than hardware acceleration. The main pr problem for hardware accelerators in HPC previously has been that even though a hardware accelerator might succeed initially, uh, it would often be very hard for the company de developing the hardware accelerator to succeed in the follow-on generation. However, for accelerators that are COTS accelerators, the next generation is guaranteed by the market which the device has been developed for in the start. The COTS accelerators of today are FPGAs, GPUs and many core CPUs. FPGAs have been developed for the embedded market and are a core device for electronic engineers when they develop devices that are specialized for a certain purpose. You will probably find an FPGA in your microwave oven, your car, or most other electronic devices that have even a small amount of complexity in them. GP, GP, GPUs have their roots in the gaming market. Computer games have traditionally been improved by higher performance of computers. This allows more special effects and uh, nicer looking games essentially. GPGPUs have come to a point where they have very high performance and can now be used as accelerators in their own right regardless of computer games. Finally we have many core CPUs which is the standard CPU in all computers that you buy today. These three kinds of devices the FPGAs, the GPUs, and the many core CPUs form a triangle of heterogeneous computing, or also known as hybrid computing. GPGPUs are excellent devices for floating point operations. Many core CPUs are good for command and control type operations, and FPGAs are good for all computations that are in the non floating point operations. The main reason for heterogeneous computing is that for each device, compared to the two other kinds of devices, they have a magnitude faster performance on their speciality. So for example, GPGPUs will be a magnitude faster on floating point operations than the other two kinds of devices. FPGAs are a magnitude faster on non-floating point operations like binary, integer, fixed point, text, but primarily all the special kinds of formats such as genomic data or binary code or decimal. CPUs are a magnitude faster on control flow type operations, operations that involve a lot of conditional execution and branching. CPUs are also the main device for sequential execution because the main difference between accelerators and classic CPUs is parallelism. However, with the advent of many core CPUs, also the CPUs are now going parallel. The main point of heterogeneous computing is that you can achieve very large performance gains if you can get the strength of all the different platforms to be used in tight integration. Now this has of course been noticed also by the large manufacturers of, of chips such as Intel and AMD. And they have made it clear that the future will be heterogeneous. For off-chip heterogeneous computing, AMD launched the Torenza program and Intel have recently launched the QuickPath program. Both of these give access for accelerators to system bus integration. That means that accelerators now have direct access to system memory and can commu communicate with other CPUs or other accelerators in a system on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. So accelerators and CPUs now have an equal footing on the system bus. But it goes further than that. On chip, we're going to see heterogeneous computing also. AMD have already announced Fusion, which will be 
uh, a combined chip containing both GPU acceleration and CPU acceleration on the same chip. Intel have not launched a particular program publicly yet. However, in all their presentations regarding future processors, it is obvious that the chips will be heterogeneous.